Hi, Internet friends. It's Tim Schrock at Design Build Solutions, and I'm excited to share this video with you. Unboxing Chief Architect X15. Drum roll, please. Yes, we're here with X15. They've released this new version, and we get to go through, there's five pages of new new features and techniques and, and upgraded, improved options in some of these uh, tools. Uh, but I just want to go through 20 of them today, and in the next few days, I'll release videos uh, going finer tuned details into some of these items. I want to talk about a this is an exciting one. Custom pattern generator. Yes, we can draw our own patterns that uh, repeat and we can use that as not a texture, but as a uh, as that two dimensional pattern. Uh, some library browser improvements. Really great stuff there. Cabinet improvements are some good stuff. Door size controls. You don't ever want to make like a saloon type of door. Um, we now have something better than what we had. Railing offsets. Finally, we get to see a railing that the uh, newels and balusters can offset the edge of the um, the edge of the deck, or vice versa. So good stuff there. I always had to do a little workaround, uh, and actually, just not that long ago, had someone call me up out of the blue and say, "How do you do this?" And I had to describe, you know, two walls, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, um, door sizing. Do you want to measure your doors inside of the frame or outside of the frame? That's a curious one. Anyway, um, corner wall framing, uh, such as like um, this, where we've got a U-shape corner. Uh, this one was super, next one was super exciting. Skylight sizing. Ah, I'd always have to figure out the roof pitch and the factor and figure out what it is in plan view. Don't have to do that anymore. Have options for multiple skylight shapes. It looks much better in, in plan view. Uh, good stuff there. Uh, artificial terrain. You'll notice I have my terrain is this small box, but in camera view, it goes on to the uh, to the horizon. Also, notice there's a sky model. There is no backdrop in this. And when I go to let's see, uh, toggle sunlight, we get a night sky. Fun stuff. We'll play around with that. Um, artificial terrain. Oh, this stuff right here. This is fun. Procedural grass. This is kind of like a um, like a uh, mulch um, feature, a terrain feature, uh, but we actually have control of some of like color, density, height. Is it mode? <laughs> a certain height level here, it, and and it really doesn't affect the rendering that much. Let me zoom in on this, and you kind of see how like. See how up against the foundation, you can see the grass blades? Procedural grass, who knew? <laughs> um, there's some cool stuff for rendering like focal blur, denoise in our uh, physically based ray tracing. Depth cueing is a cool new thing. I should have set this one up a little better. In depth cueing, you can make a back, the background of an elevation uh, kind of grayed out and make the foreground prominent. So that's a that's a neat addition to, to these elevation options for our plants. Uh, in addition to that, hidden lines below grade. How, off, how many times have we tried to figure out the best way to draw um, foundations and, and items that are below grade line or a certain level and and we don't want it the same, the same color, the same line weight value, uh, the same line type. We we want it typically. I just draw a um, blank 
uh, polyline over it and then just trace the outline of the footings and the and the foundations and doors, anything that's below grade like that in a dashed line so that my elevations in plan in, in my plan set looks good. I can do that almost automatically now with this hidden lines below grade. We can sort schedules by column. Oh my goodness, this is going to be so helpful with my window and door schedules. I like to uh, sort my window and door schedules by floor. And for some reason, it just always seems to end up that I have, you know, basement first and second floor all sort of scattered through here. Now I can a couple clicks, two clicks, and it's sorted by floor. Then I can just adjust the exterior doors toward the top of that floor as I like to do. I like to do by floor and then exterior doors and then interior doors and just uh, has it sorted nicely that way. So we can sort now by column in all of our schedules. Great stuff. Custom arrowheads. This one is kind of fun. Um, you can take a line and add an arrowhead of any CAD block that's either in your plan or in your library. So in this case, I chose a, uh, I chose just a Simpson bracket, like a peer bracket, and dropped that as my arrowhead here uh, for this line type. Curious how that might be useful later on down the road, but I think it'll be a fun and good addition. Percentage openings in wall schedule. This is really helpful for energy calculations. So if you pull up a wall schedule in, in Chief, uh, you can add this percentage percent openings um, to the to the schedule as a column, and you'll notice if I just go ahead and add some doors and windows to this wall here. Notice how that percent schedule right here is adjusting. Whoops, adjusting automatically as I add windows and adjust that information. So that's really, really helpful. Text callouts, the arrowhead transparency. Going into the attributes, you can have a fill, you know, a dark fill, all the way to no fill. Of course, you could just do a white, a, a white color like so, and that would look like no fill. Um, but I, I suppose if you did a white color, that's really, um, a, that's still a fill, right? Uh, a white fill. So let's go to attributes again, and let's do by layer and go to hundred percent transparency. And now you see how the line, it's not an actual fill of the, um, now the circle is still filled, but the arrowhead is not filled, right? I don't think, I don't think I have control of the circle itself, the fill in the circle, right? No, I don't. So just the arrowhead. So that's kind of a unique, um, improvement there. And then uh, the last thing I wanted to point out is some new data in the room dialog box. If we pull up the room dialog box, double clicking on that room here, you'll notice the room information. Number one, we have number of rooms selected. So I could select multiple rooms, two rooms selected. And now the dimensions of the two rooms is 44 by 33 foot six interior perimeter standard area, interior area, and the volume of those two rooms together. Let's go back and just select this dining room. And now you'll see the 14.4 by 11.5. That's, that's what's given in the room label that I have currently. Uh, my interior perimeter is, is this, standard area, interior area, and the volume of that room. So quickly, you can open up the room dialog box and find out some useful data for that um, for that room or selection of rooms. All right, so that's the 20 things that I highlighted here. 
that um, I'm excited about. There's there's several other uh, minor ones in here, and maybe over time I'll get to these, but I wanted to point these out um, for you today. Subscribe, hit that notification bell down there, and if you like some of these, please give a like I and comment. I enjoy the, the interaction with you all, but uh, do subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you get notified in the next several days as I release videos on more intricate details of some of these, uh, many of these improvements. All right. Thanks for watching. Take care. Have a wonderful day.